Hello everyone, this is Daniel with Coin Help You YouTube channel. Thanks for watching my latest video. And today we're going to discuss what typically some people believe as double rim coins, when in actuality they are called collar die strikes. I'm going to use an actual die and I'm going to demonstrate how some of these errors occur and how a collar die clash occurs. So please like, share, and comment and click on the little bell beside the subscribe button. Okay, let's pretend this is the anvil die. This is an actual quarter, state quarter die for Ohio that um, I bought and they ground the design off of it so that's not going to help us with that part of it. But at least let's pretend this is the collar die and let's pretend this is in one, two, three parts. And they're put together. The collar die depth is the same depth as the coin. Now, while that's sitting, let's pretend it's still on the collar or still on the anvil die. While it's sitting on that and it's seated, the hammer die comes down and strikes this. And it happens extremely fast. And anything can happen. So if you get a coin that is just not seated properly inside that collar die. You know, you can see it's off just a little bit there maybe, and it strikes it. Then you're gonna have, um, you know, out of collar a little bit. Uh, sometimes it'll be 50% or more. If you get another coin that comes in and gets struck onto it, then you got an indent, a brockage, okay? And it can be centered or it can be, you know, on the side and you'll it'll spread it out. So as you can see, when this is seated in there and in the coining chamber and this, die, this hammer die is striking these coins and they're being blown out, blown out, puffed out, puffed out, puffed out. I mean it's happening so fast that you can easily get a conglomeration. You can get multiple strikes, you can get bonded pairs, you can get, I think there's been 11 to, or more coins bonded together at one time uh, with, with when they get stuck in the chamber. And the other thing to think about is when, let's say one of these pieces of this collar die is just off just a little bit. And this, or this die is off just a little bit. And it comes down and it's just, it doesn't take much of an angle and it hits that collar die. And on the top here, it'll actually put a little bit of a moon shape or it'll put little divots from the reading. It just depends on what coin it is. If it's a nickel or, or a cent, obviously it doesn't have reading. So it'll be more like a moon shape. Otherwise it'll look like somebody took and gouged it a little bit. Well, when that strikes the coin, you'll impart what people typically call a railroad rim or they call a double rim, which it's not a double rim. It's just not, it's actually a clash. It's a collar die clash. And so we'll look at a few more examples of things that can happen in the coin chamber when it comes to this. And hopefully the visual helps you understand it a little bit because I mean, that's one of the things people don't realize. This is basically what the setup is. It may be at the, to the side, it may not be a straight up and down. And you know, you've got your hammer die coming in and hitting and these coins are being puffed out and they're coming back in and they're going, it's just like a, it's really fast. This is hard on the dies, it can be hard on the coins and if things aren't adjusted exactly the way it should be, then you're going to have an issue. A lot of times it's minor, sometimes it can be dramatic. So we'll look at a few examples and uh, do some more visuals on that one. Here's um, a picture of what they call the railroad rim. And right here, you can see where the collar die clash, after it hit the die, it imparted some reading marks on the die. And actually, when it struck the planchet in this coin, it struck it into the rim. Now all these pictures, they're not in any particular order. I just wanted to show you some examples. Um, this is a collar die clash from a readed coin. The next is a picture of a Lincoln cent, and this is showing where it's no reads, color die clash, and you can see how smooth it is. This is what a lot of people mistake for even double dies. They mistake these for double rims, and they're not. So I struck the clash mark, and here is the color die again. I'm going to give you a little bit closer of a view and what we were talking about, and this is the edge that hits the die, or the die hits, I should say. And 
when the die hits that, that's what that little edge right there is what imparts that uh, shape, that groove, for if you for want of a better word. If it had reading on it, then it would do that as well. And this all has to be exactly the same height as a coin. I mean, it all, all has to be perfect. You know, and then once this coin struck, it's puffed out. Okay, and then another coin enters the chamber. And it's got more of a setup. This is just part of the setup here. And uh, Wexler allowed me to use this image of his. Um, and next is what they call a, a partial collar strike. And that means this coin was just, the, the collar die was misaligned a little bit. So then the collar didn't completely uh, allow for the coin to be struck properly. And let's see if it shows, on this side it's showing where it looks like it's a little bit thicker on this side. And, and what it is, it just didn't um, get struck by the collar die completely on this side. And I don't have a side view of that, but typically it'll have part of the reading and some of the reading won't be there. This coin was struck multiple times out of collar, and it's actually, you see a little bit of a rotation here. You can see where it's broad struck. And here's another, there's the reverse side of that, same coin. And that's another thing, broad struck coins are spread out. They're larger than normal coins. Here's another one. This one here is a double struck in collar, and but it's also a broad struck. So we're talking about a coin that was centered, but it shows some of the broad struck. And here's another one that was um, double struck and it was rotated in collar. So you can see where there's some rotation on this one here. And so therefore you can see some more of the details on other parts of it. And uh, you know, that's another. Now some of these are worth, you know, several hundred dollars. And here are a bonded pair where they got stuck in the die chamber together and were struck multiple times. And all of these are just from malfunctions during the minting process. And you know, next time you see a coin with a little what, what looks like an extra rim, know that that's a collar die clash. If you see a coin that almost looks like it has railroad tracks on the side of it, you'll know that now that's an actual collar die clash and you see how it happens. So if this helps you, please comment and let me know. Let me know if these videos help you out. If you see anything that I need to add next time, please let me know. So like it, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate everyone for watching my videos. And thank you and have a great day.